welcome back to Calvary for Kids, boys and girls of Calvary Baptist Church. This is our truth online for the kids of Calvary Baptist Church. I'm glad that you've joined us again this week, and I hope you had a good week at uh, school, doing your schoolwork at home probably, and being with your family. And we've had a great week at our house. I hope that you've had a great week at yours as well. Well, today is a very special Sunday because it is the week after Easter Sunday. You remember that last week we talked about how Jesus was, um, was crucified and he came back to life. And the Bible says that the people that were uh, his disciples and some of his closest followers, they weren't sure what to think when Jesus came back to life. When he rose from the tomb, they went to the tomb on Easter morning and they looked for him and he wasn't there. Well, pretty shortly after that time, Jesus appeared to the people, his disciples, and he said, hey, I'm back. I came back to life. I came back uh, from the dead, just like I said that I would. And the disciples saw him, and they touched him. And Jesus says, I'm alive again, just like I said I would be. And he said, you need to go tell other people about me coming back to life and me conquering death. That's the good news of Jesus Christ. Well, this week in Calvary for Kids, we're going to talk about what happened to Jesus after Easter. The time when Jesus went back to heaven. Now, we call this the ascension story. To ascend is to go up. Have you ever ridden on an escalator? Well, that is ascending. You are going upward. Now, to descend would be to go down. So the ascension of Jesus Christ is when he went back to heaven after Easter. And this story is found in the book of Acts. Now, the book of Acts is, has some of the most exciting stories in all of the Bible. There are stories of people preaching and people getting saved and people coming back to life, and people being healed, and people serving God. The book of Acts is one of the best books in all of the Bible. And so in our story today, it comes from the book of Acts chapter number one. And in the book of Acts here, chapter one, the people, especially the disciples and some other Christians, uh, these are the people that God used to help spread the good news of Jesus Christ. You see, after Jesus came back to life, he spent about 40 days back here on earth. And during that time, uh, several people saw him. The disciples saw him a couple of times. And uh, he was seen by several hundred people at once in a couple of different spots in the, book of, um, in the book of Acts. We're told some of those stories. So Jesus was seen by many people after he came back to life. For about 40 days after Jesus came back from the dead, he told his disciples it was time for him to go back to heaven, to go back to see his heavenly father. And the disciples said, well, we're sure going to miss you, but what should we do? And Jesus says, well, I need you to go tell people about the gospel of Jesus Christ, how they can be saved from their sins. Well, Jesus and his disciples went out to a place outside of Jerusalem called the Mount of Olives. It was kind of like a garden, and there's a nice, a nice area there where Jesus had gone to spend some time with his disciples and to pray there sometimes and things like that. So he led them up to the Mount of Olives, and up on the Mount of Olives, Jesus t said to his disciples, Now look, after I'm gone, I need you to go back to Jerusalem. Because when you go back to Jerusalem, the Holy Spirit is going to come visit you. And it's going to be a very, very special time. So after I go back to heaven, you need to go back to Jerusalem and wait for the Holy Spirit to give you power to go tell others about me. So the disciples all said goodbye to Jesus. And they were a little bit sad because they were a little bit uncertain about what they were going to do next. And if they were going to be, uh, if they were going to be in trouble, if the Romans and the Jews were going to come after them and try to kill them like they had done to Jesus. But Jesus said, don't be afraid. I will be with you no matter where you go. He said, go tell other people everywhere about what you have seen about my life, about the miracles I've done and the people I've healed and how I died and I came back to life. And as they were standing there talking to Jesus, a very bright light shone, the Bible says, and Jesus ascended up into heaven. Can you imagine standing there on that hill and watching Jesus go up into a cloud, ascending up into heaven? And Jesus said, go and tell other people about me. Those were his last words as he ascended up into heaven. And the disciples just stood there with their mouths open saying, wow, that is incredible. Jesus is going back to heaven and we're standing here watching him. So sure enough, they were kind of surprised and they stood there looking up in the sky and saying, huh, I wonder where Jesus went. I wonder if he's coming back. And they just kind of stood there for a minute watching. They'd, they'd seen him go up into heaven with their very own eyes. Well, as they were standing there kind of gawking and and looking at each other and kind of wondering what to do, a couple of angels appeared, and they said, hey, look, Jesus has gone to heaven. You're not going to see him anymore, but one day he's going to come back again. He's, in fact, he's going to come back the exact same way that you just saw him leave to go to heaven. So, boys and girls, we know that Jesus is going to come back one day. The Bible says he's going to come back with the sound of a trumpet and the shout of God, and he's going to appear in the sky just like when he left. 
So the angel said, now remember, Jesus gave you some specific instruction. Now go back to Jerusalem and start telling people about him, but wait for the Holy Spirit. He's going to come and he's going he's to give you power to do some great things for him. So the disciples headed back down the hill to Jerusalem and they were kind of unsure what to do. They knew they were supposed to wait for the Holy Spirit to come, but they didn't really know what that meant. Well, they, they obeyed, and they went back down to Jerusalem, and they started meeting together. And, uh, the Bible calls a, uh, the upper room. It's maybe someone's house or their apartment or a place where they would get together, and they would pray, and they would talk about Jesus and talk about what their next ideas were. But they were waiting, and they were kind of waiting and waiting because they weren't sure what was going to happen. All they knew is that they were supposed to wait, and the Holy Spirit was going to come. So these disciples went back, and they obeyed without questioning. So let me ask you this. Do you obey? right away? Do you obey without questioning? When mom and dad or your teachers or your pastor say, hey, you need to do this, do you go and obey right away without questioning? The disciples did. Well, one day they were together in the upper room and they hear the wind start to blow. And it gets faster and faster. And they, they felt the wind shake the house and it rattled all the windows. And it started making lots of noise. It was very, very powerful. It was the Holy Spirit sent from God. And they were there in the upper room, and they thought, wow, this is incredible. And the wind rushed, and they could hear the howling of the wind outside. They were probably a little bit nervous. And as they stood around in that upper room, they looked at each other, and they said, hey, you've got a little flame above your head. See, the book of Acts says that they saw what looked like little flames flickering over their heads. And this was the power of the Holy Spirit filling all of them. And it felt to them like God was right there with them. Well, it was the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is part of God. There are three parts to our God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit was coming uh, to these men to fill them with his power so they could do great things for him. And they started being very joyful. They were so excited, and those flames danced over their head. It didn't burn them, though. And their hearts were full of God's love, and they started to praise God and sing songs. And they could do something very unusual. In fact, the Bible says that they were able to start speaking in different languages. They started speaking in French and Spanish and Italian and Latin and all these languages that they didn't even know. The Holy Spirit filled them with different languages so they could tell other people about Jesus Christ in other languages. The Holy Spirit's uh, power made them very, very brave, and they were super excited to go out and start telling people about Jesus because now they were filled with the Holy Spirit. They went outside and started telling everyone about Jesus and how he could save them, and they, took, they spoke to people in uh, other languages from other countries. And they were telling that Jesus had risen from the dead and that every, everyone could be saved that wanted to. And all these people understood what these men were saying and they started getting saved. The Bible says that hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people started trusting on Jesus Christ to be their savior because of these disciples and their new boldness that the Holy Spirit gave them. The Holy Spirit came into their lives and this was the beginning of something that was brand new and many people believed on him on Jesus Christ because of that day. We call that day a very special name. It's called Pentecost. Pentecost, it's when the Holy Spirit came to indwell believers like you and me. And boys and girls, the Bible says that we don't have to be afraid of anything because we know that God is with us and we know the Holy Spirit, if we're a Christian, lives inside of us to help us do what God wants us to do, which is to live for him. And to tell others about Jesus and to obey mom and dad and do what we're supposed to be doing every day. The Holy Spirit will live inside your life and he'll help you understand the Bible when you read it. He will help you uh, think right thoughts. He'll help you to make right choices. And uh, we need to be telling other people about the good news of Jesus Christ. It's one thing that the book of Acts teaches us here on this story of Christ's ascension and then Pentecost. But the Holy Spirit also wants to help us live for God. See, God didn't just give us the Bible and say, here, obey it. No, he said, here, I want you to obey my word, but I'm also going to give you the Holy Spirit to help you live for God. And that's a wonderful blessing, a wonderful gift that God has given us through uh, the Holy Spirit being given to us on that day of Pentecost, right after Jesus went back to heaven. That's the story of the ascension. Isn't that a great story? That's found in Acts chapter 1. You ought to read that story sometime at home. Ask mom or dad to help you if you need to. Get a Bible. Turn to Acts chapter 1. And just start reading the stories that are found in Acts of all the things that the disciples and the Christians did after Jesus went back to heaven. Well, this week in our activity sheet, you have a real challenge. I'm going to give you this sheet that has two different scenes. 
a top and a bottom, and you've got to find eight differences between the two pictures. There are eight things that change from top to bottom. You've got to circle them or put a star next to them or something, and then you need to color both top and bottom and have mom and dad take a picture of that and post that up to Facebook. Let's see how quickly you can do that. Find those eight differences between those two pictures. Well, that's the story of the Ascension and the story of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came to live in believers.